Hello, my name is Qasem Al-Rafi. I am the Customer Support Specialist and the Power BI Specialist here for the iTrack 365 team. Today we will be discussing form buildings as a um, as the next class in our form building series. Today we'll be talking about form checklists. We'll be discussing how to create a checklist, which will include single select, multi-select, and um, calculated. We'll all talk about how to link that form checklist to the form type and how we will submit checklists from a user point of view. And should there be any QA at the very end, we will do that as well. And as always with these you know, continuous courses, we do recommend you go back and watch the, um, the related courses in terms of how to build cause analysis, how to build that basic form type field in our other form building series. Just in case I'm going a bit too fast and it's hard to follow along, I do skip a bit more of that basic um, stuff during the webinar. So this is already a you know, pre-filled form type that just show the example of what a checklist is. I'll give you as a quick example. So here, you know, we have um, for the contracted work, if we hit edit here, we can see here, you know, we have a bunch of groups, these blue hyperlinks. And then we have a bunch of items within those groups that the people can select. And at the very bottom, we do have a calculation result. This is what we call a uh, form checklist calculated. So if I hit yes, for example, we see the value state at zero. However, if I hit no um, across the board, that number will change once everything is um, fully selected. And we'll talk about how to assign those values and how to make some pretty cool formulas with the calculated field. Secondly, if I go down to safety performance responses and I hit that little edit button, this is what we call a multi-select where we have these, um, you know, sort of groups or sorry, the list name with the groups on the bottom and then these little items inside and you can actually add text alongside the, um, the checklist. And from there you just hit OK. Whatever you write will save and show up, you know, on the report that you print. We can pull this out in Power BI and there's so much we can do with this, um, you know, pretty simple tool. So with that being said, let's begin. We'll begin by entering CRM. You'll know that you're in the right page. If you're on the top left here and it says iTrack 365 Hub, at the bottom left here, you wanna make sure we're in the forms area and we'll just head over to form checklists here on the left-hand side. From there, we'll head over to the top ribbon and hit new. And we're gonna call our list name webinar form checklist and hit save, all right. So once you hit save, we see that like all the records that we've created in the past, we get some new options. We have form checklist groups and we have form checklist items. So when I hit new form checklist group on the right hand side here, I'm basically just creating that equivalent of what I did here um, is that blue sort of subtitle or title if you're doing a calculated list. So this contractor is meeting expectations would be the form checklist group. So we're gonna call this group one, and then this code here, and I'll explain a bit more once we get into the, the heavy details of the form checklist field, is we're gonna call it G1. And what this does, that allows us to pull that code into the formula and start creating some calculations within the list. So once we hit save, we see at the bottom here, it allows us to add checklist items to the, to the list. So we'll hit new form checklist item, and we're given some more options. You know, we'll call it just yes. We'll say checklist group equals group one. The value of yes will be two. We'll allow text like we showed in the earlier tutorial. And then we'll make sure that selecting yes is green as it usually denotes something positive. From there, we'll hit save and close. Then we'll go down back to new form checklist item. We'll create one saying no, give it a value of zero allow text and we'll make it red. And the final one is we'll call it an A, which will be a value of one, allow text and gray. So once that's done, we've created sort of the shell of the first group. And then we can just go back and, you know, create a second group just for the sake of um, properly showing how it works. Same idea, new checklist item. Yes, two, 
and green. And then we also have, you know, the form inspection. So there's many ways you can sort of create these checklists, but with the um, form checklist, it's usually meant to be easier and a lot less um, items attached to it, I guess you can say. And then we'll okay, get gray. So we'll just create a simple two group, three item checklist. Once we go back, you want to make sure that we have our form checklist groups here. So we see we created both of them with the proper codes. And then if we go back, we see that we have three in the group one, three in group two. And see, I missed that value here in NA. So I just go back in there, add the one. It's always good to just double check your work there. So everything here looks proper. The next thing we're going to do is go over into our form type section. And we're actually going to add the um, form checklist to the form type. Over the past couple webinars, and I do suggest you go back and watch them, um, we've been creating this form type called webinar form type. We've talked about, you know, simple controls, basic section displays, basic inspections, and we've just been really adding to the list of things we have here. So I'll hit this little three dot button here. I'll create a new section, and I'll call this section form checklists. All right, and I'll hit save. I hit new form type field, I'll go. So once we get to the new form type field, we have a couple options. So we see here, user defined list. We have multi-select, single select, and weighted. I won't get into weighted today, it is a bit more complicated, but at the very, very bottom, we do have user defined list calculated. So we'll be showcasing on these three. So what you'll do is you'll hit user defined list, multi-select. We'll just call it form checklist bracket multi. Great. Well, let's show label. Everything here is basically, you know, out of box. We've seen all this all before, but now at the very bottom we have requirements, right? So we're going to say, you know, we created a two group um, three checklist. So we're going to say, you know, required range. We're going to say we want them to at least select um, one of the options, um, but they can select two, for example, or they can select all three, but at the minimum they do need to select one of them. And then the rows, uh, that doesn't necessarily matter because you can just sort of have it set up either sideways like we saw with the calculated list or vertically like we did with the multi-select. We'll keep that at zero. And at the very bottom here in list, we just have to search for the list we just created and we'll select it. And once that's finished, we have now um, you know, added that form checklist to the form type on a multi-select. There are a couple other things you can do, and I'll talk about the section display. So if we hit new section display here, and you know we say form type category, sorry, hit save first. Um, if yes, show this. Save first. I talked about section displays in the earlier ones. Um, what you want to do here is you want to go add list item on the very top, and we're going to say um, yes add I'll take a second to show but I'll hit refresh there we go um, and then what we're saying here is we're going to add a form type section as well so I'll hit show and we'll just create section display test for example hit add and what this is saying is that you know in this form checklist multi-select you know, if yes, show section. We say in the yes of group one, we want to show that section display test. So these sort of things all link together. If we hit save and close, we'll actually see um, what we have here as well. Cool. So from there, we're going to go back and we're just going to create. Actually, I'll show you guys what this looks like in our in our demo form. Cool. We go down to our webinar form group webinar form type, and then hit new form type. Right. So from there, um, the form checklist is a complex control, so we will have to save the record before we're able to um, sort of use that checklist we just created. But if you go to the bottom here, you know it gives us that requirement option saying 
between one and three items are required. And if we hit edit here, it shows us that we have, you know, group one, yes, group no, two. Uh, when you add text, I believe that it does just default to vertical, but we'll hit yes up here and NA down there. If I don't select NA, for example, and hit OK, that's fine. Um, and if I did not, if I selected more than three items, for example, it will give you an, uh, an error message there. Or then, so we'll hit group one, yes, group two, yes, that's good enough for now. And then if I scroll up, we should see that section display um, control there. Group two, yes, that's good enough for now. And then if I scroll up, so from there, the next thing you want to do is showcase the single select, which is a bit easier. If you go down to single select, it's that same option you have, um, the same way of submitting the form or attaching the form checklist to the um, form type field. We'll go form checklist, single. At the very bottom, it's just as simple as looking for that same checklist you created earlier. We'll hit save and close. And then if we refresh that webinar form type we just opened up, right, we'll be able to see sort of the single select option that we now have. And this is really good, you know, if we're saying, if you want to say options like, you know, is this a third party incident? Yes or no. Does this require additional help? Yes or no. Is this uh, reportable to the government? Yes or no. These sort of simple questions. That's sort of where this form checklist single um, really comes into play as well. Because unfortunately with the um, current system, you can only have two yes, no fields. So this is our way to bypass that issue. So we'll just hit yes there. Now, unfortunately, you see that this um, you know, line is super long. As you mentioned in previous webinars, the only reason to change this is we go down here into width and we can just create this into you know, 300 pixels. And if we hit save and refresh that, um, we will see that sort of formatting change. All right, and the last thing you can do is you can talk about a dialog or a drop down. I'll actually hit dialog so you can see the difference. That drop down field looks like the yes no one where it goes up and down, whereas the dialog I believe will just give you the options um, on the report fully. Okay, refresh one more time. Also, sorry, dialog is a pop up here and you can just select which group you want to say. Hit okay, yes no add that text and select and it's there now cool and finally for the hardest control we have we're going to hit new form type field again we're going to go down to list calculated you know, we're going to go into list find that webinar form type list now the formula is where it gets a bit confusing i'll just duplicate my tab here a little bit and I'll try to showcase how this kind of works, right? So if you go back into, there we go. If we go back into that form checklist we created on the right hand side here, we search for webinar. You see here that, you know, the code for group one is G1 and the values are associated with each of these um, fields. So let's say you want to do something simple. We put a square bracket G1, close square bracket, plus bracket G2, close bracket, right? So we're taking these codes from the checklist groups and we're adding them to the formula list down here. And the, and the, the cool thing about this is, you know, we've when it comes to our COVID assessment, we've had these checklists been created and we'll say, you know, if they've selected no X amount of times and the number, uh, if you go in the section displays here and we see that that value is greater than, Right, so let's say a minimum value is zero and that maximum value is two, for example, then you can show this section display. So you're actually able to add, you know, higher values if it's a higher risk issue, for example, um, or you can add uh, whatever you want to do as endless possibilities, but you have the ability to add values to those answers and show the section displays um, accordingly. So let's say you wanted to say, hey, call 911 right away. This is a huge emergency. If this value is above that, that is something that you can do. I won't hit save just because we've shown the section displays, but that's the way that that works. Everything is good here. The formula set up. So if we hit save and go back to our form webinar, I'll just full screen it here. 
and we go down to the form checklist calc and hit edit. So we remember that yes equals two and no equals zero, therefore they equals two. If you want to go NA, that was one equals three. And you can do division, you can do uh, multiplication, I believe. There's simple math with it that will really help you get um, value out of these checklists. So those are the three options that are mainly used with iTrack forms. Um, weighted, we might get into in the, uh, a later topic. It's just a bit more complicated version of the form checklists. But you know, these three simple forms will do the job majority of the time. And like I said, form checklists are a lot simpler than the inspections control we showed earlier. And it really just is a quick way to give your um, users, uh, users a faster way to select multiple items. Cool. Um, so with that being said, this is a quicker webinar. Uh, if you guys do have any further questions outside of this time, please email us, email us at support at itrack365.com. Make sure you watch our previous videos on our YouTube channel. And I'll just sort of show you some stuff that our um, marketing team has been doing. We've been sort of creating playlists on, you know, a showcase, the form building webinar series that this video will go into. We have some customer case studies and this iTrack learning one is going to be a huge one in terms of you know, if you have new users on board, if you're trying to get a new iTrack administrator, this has all our form building sections, our simple how to Microsoft Teams, you know, mobile um, usage and so more, so much more. And we're going to be adding how to videos, uh, playlists as well, which are these quick one minute snippets on what can you, what you can expect in the future. So with that being said, thank you and have a great day.